to Dr. Paul Craig Roberts popping in here in a moment, former Wall Street Journal editor, former head of policy, Department of uh, Treasury, dealing with uh, some of his new articles he's written, the uh, new definition of conspiracy theory, how offshoring has destroyed the U.S. economy. Nobel economist Michael Spence says globalization is costly for Americans, no kidding. But also this new great war that we're not supposed to call a war. Uh, first, I want to cover that with him. Italy breaks ranks over NATO, says that they want to pull out now. The Germans have pulled out. Uh, and meanwhile, they got the huge Marine Corps drill, amphibious assault set for this week on the East Coast. And uh, our intelligence is they're going into Libya in uh, late September, early October. I have that directly from Fort Hood, even the units that will be involved, 1st Cav or 3 Corps. That's all coming up in a moment. This is a big Going to Dr. Deal. Paul Craig Roberts, former Wall Street Journal editor, former head of policy, Department of Education, uh, syndicated columnist. We carry his great reports uh, at InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. He's written a lot of powerful articles the last few days. It's always great to have him pop in via video Skype with us. And, uh, Doc, I, I threw out a few of the things you've written about, but uh, front and center, uh, the Washington Post and others have had to come out and say basically nobody is buying anymore that – the Nobel Peace Laureate is a man of peace and that these wars in Yemen and Libya and the overthrow in Egypt and the ships massing and the surrogate groups attacking in uh, Syria uh, out of Kurdistan, uh, that the fact is this is really a new world war via proxy. Uh, where do you see all of this going from your research? I mean, this is this is pretty scary stuff. Well, Alex, I, I think there are, there are two ways it can go. I it could go into uh, direct uh, American confrontation with China and uh, Russia. <clears throat> it looks on the surface like that's where it's headed right now because of Libya. Th there, we're driving them out of their oil investments. And the Syria thing is about the Russian naval base at Tartus. And so we're trying to... Uh, overthrow the Assad regime in order to get a puppet in there that will evict the Russians from their only Mediterranean naval base. So then the Mediterranean Sea belongs to us. So it could go into a direct confrontation. Right now we hide behind Arab protest and pretend that this is something that's directed at uh, Gaddafi and Assad. It's really directed at China and Russia. Uh, on the other hand, <clears throat> what uh, could happen is that just about every country now has serious internal problems, apparently China as well as Russia. And, and what kind of war we could end up with is just chaos. That is not a World War II type situation or even a Vietnam type or even an Iraq type, but just all kinds of uh, chaos internal in each country from dissatisfied uh, citizens. Global bedlam triggered by the global dollar devaluation, correct? By that, by the uh, bubbles, the asset bubbles by the in the West, of course, by the theft, by the bankers. Uh, as you see in Greece and Spain, you know, these, uh, this isn't played up, as you know, in the American media, but these people have been in the streets for weeks and weeks. And um, so, and then cross-border skirmishes. Um, you know, uh, this uh, this article that I recently wrote about the economy and offshoring. When when you have a, an established establishment figure like Michael Spence, a Nobel Prize-winning economist, writing in the uh, establishment uh, journal uh, of the uh, uh, Council on Foreign Relations that uh, the United States faces a serious structural challenge in terms of the uh, quantity and quality of jobs, then how long before Americans are going to be in the streets like the Greeks and the Spaniards? So it, it, could go, it could go either way or both ways. And the response to all sorts of internal unrest uh, could be to foment a major war. This, of course, is extremely risky because of, of the nuclear weapons. Uh, the United States, China, Russia, they all have immense quantities of nuclear weapons. 
And most likely, uh, not any of those countries would be willing to sort of be run over by the other. So I think the world is at an extremely high level of risk of uh, essentially annihilation and uh, that the American government is the most irresponsible government that the world has ever seen because all the troubles that are producing this come mainly out of Washington and Wall Street and they cease, that they never cease to continue on these paths that are producing this extraordinary turmoil. They destroy the dollar, which affects the whole world, as you said, the prices of food, of energy, and they are behind so much of the uh, rebellions and troubles. And uh, so it's almost uh, like the United States is, uh, or Washington, let me put it that way, Washington is determined to uh, destroy not only themselves, but the rest of the world. And that looks to me like what the real picture is. And we're seeing more and more reckless behavior by people like Wiener. Uh, this is a senior congressman in Homeland Security uh, Committee, you know, highly involved in so many issues. And so many of these elitists now are so unstable, they're sending photographs around, uh, you know, with images of their, of their member, and then trying to blame Breitbart for it, saying he's, you know, the, the, that it's a conspiracy, and if you don't believe that, you're a conspiracy theorist. Dr. Roberts, I'm seeing two things happen, and I want your comment on this, and then you can comment on Wiener, but I'm seeing two things happen. I'm seeing a lot of people come out and state the obvious, like the Nobel Prize winner, saying globalism's destroyed us, and other, you know, other high-powered people coming out and being honest about, hey, this is a war, our elite is insane, we're, we were headed towards global you know, degeneration and multi-region wars that have high casualties, that's the definition of a world war, all of this going on. So, so you have one group of people, folks stepping out, being honest, going, man, this has gotten bad, but then other people, uh, like Fareed... Uh, Zarkaria and saying the Constitution's bad, get rid of it, and bizarre statements uh, by Obama saying, no, I define this as peace, so it is peace. Sh uh -huh. sh so it's like they're trying to pile on and make us buy their delusion. And then meanwhile, they're taking photos of themselves and sending it to women. I mean. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's amazing. I agree with that. Absolutely amazing. I think that um, uh, it, we can't look to any hope in either party. Uh, in fact, it's not really two parties anymore. With, with uh, the destruction of the unions, the Democrats are subject to the same uh, Wall Street, military, security complex, APEC financing that the Republicans are. So we have one party. They all serve this uh, oligarchy of money. We have all the various plots that you uh, expose at times. Uh, and, and all of these plots, of course, are working against each other. And, and as we know, the best laid plans of mice and men often go awry. So plots are going awry. There are idiots everywhere with power. And uh, the American people, uh, what can they do? I think the only answer is what Gerald Salenti was talking to you about yesterday when he said direct democracy. We'll just let the people vote on everything and only a majority decision uh, prevails. So, of course, that's got problems too. But as it is now, the people have no voice. And the founding fathers always had more confidence in the people than they had in the elites or in organizations run by elites. So maybe our only recourse is to uh, somehow just shove the established system out of the picture. Maybe we can use all this modern technology like, like was used in uh, Egypt and Tunisia to get the people together out in the streets. I mean, at least they drove the figurehead out of power. Um, but here's the problem with that. Now the Pentagon admits they're building their own private networks so their revolutionaries can overthrow. They're putting cybersecurity in place even though they haven't passed the law. Here's a headline out of CNET, U.S. building virtual internet as cyber attack tested. Right as they try to pass the Cybersecurity Act, all these cyber attacks happen. Uh, and they've been caught before staging events. They're clearly putting an authoritarian system in. They're clearly getting the private spy networks up. They're clearly FBI shutting down whole giant 
uh, computer network, you know, hosting companies to get it one website. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean, it, 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 I mean, really, we know the answer. They're 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 trying to destabilize everything, knowing that they can pose then as the saviors in the crises and grab more and more power. But there is good news with the fights against the TSA gaining steam. Man, you know what? Just all Hades is breaking loose. I mean, I think it just comes down to that at the end of the day. Yes, that's what it comes down to. And, and more Hades will break loose. Uh, the more people lose their homes, their jobs, uh, the ability to function in the established society. Uh, as that spreads, uh, the turmoil will grow. And um, I don't know if uh, we can beat the uh, police state to the punch or not. Uh, on the whole, these private hackers seem to be better at it than the state. So <laughs> maybe, maybe there is a chance uh, for some kind of uh, fundamental uh, revolution in the structure of government that gets rid of, of what's sitting there uh, on the entire world in Washington. Well, as you know, history shows that these people go insane, and, and we, we've had little debates. Uh, you're saying they're super incompetent, but yeah, there are you know, plots and, and delusions of uh, grandeur, and, and then I'm saying, no, they're more well-organized than you're saying, but more and more, I think it's they think they're organized. They think with their NSA tracking, they're able to predict mass movements and things, but yeah. at the end of the day, I think you're probably right in, in, that, in that they really don't know what they're doing, and... and, and uh, at the end of the day, are going to just release. Ab I mean, I mean, th they know we're in a depression. They know things are getting worse, and they think if they just tell us everything's great, it's going to make us believe it's better. And I think, in fact, I know the system is 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 accelerating their loss of credibility. And then they think that an iron fist is going to back that up. I I don't think it's going to work. I mean, I think they're going to fail in this global corporate crime syndicates take over, but they may destroy all of us in the process. That's right, they may. Um, I think they'll fail too because uh, there's not enough of them. Too, too few people are benefiting from the takeover that they have in motion. It's, you know, it's less than 1% of the population. So you've got 99% of the people who are being screwed by their plans. So that can't work. Uh, even force, I don't think, can can alter uh, numbers that are that heavily weighted against you. Well, that's another thing. How can they all over the country be laying police off, stealing their pension funds, claiming it's welfare, you know, that yeah. police and fire unions are getting money yeah. they put in. Now they want private pension funds. They're trying that in Europe. Uh, I mean, how do they expect the cops to enforce on us? Uh, the same thing's happening now in Greece when they're going to be robbed as well. I mean, that, that, that doesn't... Right. That's right, and that's exactly it. And even as we've talked before, Alex, even if they can get the police to cooperate with them, you have to remember the United States was never able to occupy Baghdad. <laughs> and the only way we ever stopped uh, the carnage that our troops were suffering was by hiring the insurgents ourselves and putting them on the American military payroll. So unless so if they can't occupy Baghdad, they can't occupy the United States. <laughs> and unless they put the entire population on their payroll, uh, they've got more problems potentially than it's possible for them to deal with. So, you know, I don't think that either party can produce any leadership because the power of money and the power of the oligarchy is just too powerful, it's too strong. And if any real leader were to appear within one of the parties, he would either quickly be smeared and framed up or they would assassinate him. And the oligarchy, if it went slower uh, with soft power, could have stayed in power and even grown their power. But instead, I, th I think they're so hubris filled that they're driving forward with delusions of global domination. And the only threat to oligarchy is, th is, th is themselves. That's right. You know, it's just like Hitler. He marched off into Russia. <laughs> if he hadn't, he'd still be there. <laughs> so we, we're marching off everywhere, you know, in Libya and looks like Syria, perhaps. And uh, they still have a Yemen. Land. They're talking yeah. about Sudan now, Pakistan. Oh, we only got a few minutes left, uh, five minutes after this break. But start getting into your excellent article that came out a few days ago. You know, the redefining of, uh, of conspiracy theory. 
Now, conspiracy theory now is any fact or any explanation that's contrary to the governments and the medias. So it encompasses almost the whole realm of truth. <laughs> Just about everything is true is a conspiracy theory. If you talk about all the jobs lost to offshoring, well, that's a conspiracy theory. Uh, it's not just applied to 9-11. <laughs> it's now any disagreement with the government and the official media. Let, that is a conspiracy theory. Let's break that down in the last five minutes of the show with Dr. Paul Craig Roberts. We'll also tell you about his uh, new edition of his new book that's out, uh, How the Economy was lost, the war of the worlds. I'm Alex Jones. The websites are infowars.com and prisonplanet.tv. And this is a fight between truth and lies, good and evil. And two plus two equals four. If you can say that, man. And uh, they're fiddling while Rome burns, and they've got their CNN host saying, get rid of the Bill of Rights and Constitution. They've, they've got their people running around throwing it in our face. But uh, really, I believe they're making themselves passe or discredited by saying everything's a conspiracy theory. I mean, I hear it now where they actually have Obama and people saying, I say if something's a war or not, and I say it isn't. <laughs> and it reminds me of Karl Rove six years ago telling the New York Times, he said, I control reality. I say what it is, and then you agree. Is that understood? I mean, these people are lunatics. Uh, uh, but finishing up with that you know, uh, article, though, about the uh, new definition of a conspiracy theory is anything not in their false reality. That's right. Any truth. Uh, for example, uh, you're attacked for being a conspiracy theorist because you reveal truths. Uh, Russia Today, you know, the TV uh, station, RT, they've been attacked by the New York Times uh, for reporting uh, news and opinions that the New York Times doesn't approve of. And the New York Times doesn't report, and therefore they're a conspiracy theory. I told you about uh, my experience with the Huffington Post. After they interviewed me on the war, they then found out that I had uh, uh, actually reported on some of the findings of 9-11 skeptics, you know, scientists. And so they quickly uh, made it a, an adjustment to their interview with me. And they said, well, you don't have to listen to him because he's a conspiracy theorist. So uh, if you just report facts, even without endorsing them, you're now a conspiracy theorist. So... I think uh, it's becoming a, a badge of honor to be called a conspiracy theorist because it means you tell the truth. <laughs> well, that's it. I mean, I remember being called a conspiracy theorist for saying Bush was lying about WMDs. Uh, right. and, and then the fact that they've been caught lying so much, uh, really questioning them is a, is a conspiracy theory. Uh, <laughs> uh, having reason, not believing people that have a history of congenital lying, that... Yeah. Is, is, is not just conspiracy theory, it's extremism, Dr. Roberts. Oh, yes, of course. Uh, I mean, look, uh, see, now they're all over Syria, accusing uh, Assad of being a butcher and all of this. But who's the real butcher? It's Washington, isn't it? Uh, you know, John Pilger's uh, film, uh, The War You Don't See, he shows that in the current wars that we are waging, 90% of the casualties are civilians. <laughs> So for every uh, so-called insurgent or enemy we kill, we kill nine civilians. Well, we've murdered more people than if you took all the deaths of Assad and, and Saddam Hussein and Gaddafi and you multiply them by a million, you wouldn't reach the amounts of people the United States government's killed in the last 10 years. And yet we get on this high horse about how evil Assad is. Well, he's nothing compared to the United States, to Bush or Cheney or Obama or Hillary or any of them. They're all massive war criminals. But, but wait, he has a peace prize, though. I, I, isn't that absurd? I mean, that's got to discredit that prize for all time. I think if they were to give it to me, I'd just say, no, you, you keep it. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, well, you know, you can It's tell. an albatross. Yeah, the, the reason they did it was to try to reinforce what they thought was his, his inclination to wind the war down. But they didn't understand that he would be a puppet of the same uh, oligarchy that every other president was a puppet. Well, doctor, how dare you question anything? When you're walking down steps at night, you shouldn't even look below you. That's being a conspiracy theorist. Thank you for joining us. We we'll look forward to talking to you again soon.